I have been doing Mystery Mondays for a while now on this channel. And lately we have been looking into missing people from national parks here in the United States. As many of you know, we started off with the Bennington Triangle and what I like to call the Bennington Five. But last week we spoke about the case of Jacob Gray. Jacob Gray went missing in the Olympic National Park in Washington State. Now what I did not realize when I was researching Jacob Gray, that like the Bennington Triangle, the Olympic National Park also had about five people go missing in a certain amount of time. And today we're gonna start with the first person who went missing mysteriously in the Olympic National Park in 1997. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, such a very special thank you to all of our patrons and our producers. Once again, I'm still not able to get into my Patreon account. I'm really hoping this has something to do with what's going on in the world right now. You guys know what I mean. But when I'm able to get back into my account, I will be adding the credit reel back on to all of my episodes. I hope you guys know how much I appreciate all of you for helping this channel continue to grow and for giving me the financial means to be able to purchase things for this channel to make it easier for your viewing pleasure. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today on Mystery Monday, we are going to be talking about the case of John Devine. Now, as many of you are aware, I live right smack dab in the middle of Atlanta, Georgia. If I look out my window right now, I really can't see the sky. I can only really see skyscrapers. So with that being said, sometimes cities get a little noisy. And ever since around five o'clock this morning, there have been helicopters above my house. These sound like they might be military helicopters. That's why it's so, so, so loud. And I am filming this on Friday, January 14th. Of course, this will be airing on Monday. So if you guys hear something, hear the helicopters, that is what you are hearing. Obviously, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. And so I do ask for your forgiveness. I honestly am hoping that those are military helicopters for a good reason. We'll see what the day brings, but anyway, just be aware that that is what you're hearing if you do hear them, and I do apologize, but they've literally been up in the sky since about 5 a.m., and right now it is currently 8, 11 a.m. on Friday morning, so again, they've been going for a long time, and I don't know how long they're going to be going, but it is what it is, and so I hope that it doesn't disturb you too much when we get into this story. Now, in the opening, I said that John Devine was one of the first to go missing in 1997 in this block of time, just kind of like the Bennington Triangle, where we have five people that went missing in about a five-year period. Now, John Devine was not the first person to go missing in this park, but he is the first person with this grouping of people, including the person that we talked about last week, which was Jacob Gray. In fact, the Northwest, if you've never been to the Northwest of the United States, is an area that's typically pretty easy to go missing. It's very dense forest. The weather is very gray, very rainy. And as one person said, I thought this was great when I was researching the park, one person who's a native to the area said that even though we call it the Northwest, they, the locals, call it the North Wet. In fact, the western side of Olympic National Park is considered to be a rainforest. The vegetation, again, is very, very dense, and the forest itself is very, very loud. This, again, is due to the amount of rain and the way it echoes when it comes into the park. Because of this, once more, it makes disappearances and vanishings very, very easy. There's another thing, though, with the National Park that because of the terrain, because of the way things can stay hidden, we have a huge Bigfoot sensation in the area. Now, Bigfoot has also been spotted in places like the Appalachia Mountain near where I live, but something to consider with all of these cases going forward is the phenomenon of Bigfoot. 
Now, if you're like me and you've been on this journey of awakening, you know that nothing really surprises us anymore. Some people might scoff at the idea of Bigfoot even existing, whereas there are a lot of people in the area of the Olympic National Park that do believe that Bigfoot is the culprit behind all of these vanishings. Now, if you joined us last week, you know that Jacob Gray's body was eventually found. However, with the case of John Devine and some others we're going to cover, no trace of them has ever been seen again. Now, once again, because the forest is so dense, it could be that we just haven't found the body. And maybe we won't find the body because it's stuck in a location that is nearly impossible for humans to get to, but it could very well be a case of Bigfoot. Or something that I'm concerned about, a more nefarious group of human beings. John Devine was a 73-year-old resident of Sequin, Washington. Even though he was quite older, John was a very, very well-experienced hiker. In fact, Sequin, Washington is only about 30 miles away from Olympic National Park. This meant that John was someone that was very familiar with the area and spent a lot of his life hiking the park. Now it is important to note that John was legally blind in one of his eyes. I really sat on this for a little while because even though he was legally blind in one of his eyes, again, he had grown up in this national park. And as human beings, we can understand, I mean, at least for me, I know the neighborhood I grew up in, like the back of my hand, I think I would be fine. Uh, biking around my neighborhood now at 38 years old if I was legally blind in one eye because I, I just know it so well from, from childhood. And growing up in Atlanta, we are about two hours south of kind of the base of the Appalachian Mountains and we hike the, the base of the Appalachian Mountains a lot. And even though I would never say that I was an experienced hiker, I do know certain areas of the trails that I've been on a lot now where I think I would still feel relatively safe even if I had gone legally blind in one eye. The only thing that I can see where this tidbit of information for John might be relevant is if there was something like Bigfoot where maybe he couldn't see through his peripheral vision on one side of his body that there was something coming towards him or if it's something even more sinister like a portal. If you joined us last week, you know that I stated that according to a lot of these boards, like the Palladians and the Cassiopeian boards, things like Bigfoot aren't necessarily something we should be afraid of. In fact, a lot of the interdimensional beings do say that Bigfoot is almost like a pet, almost like your, your family dog. They're not really out there to hurt anybody. And even though you could say that there could have been like a Bigfoot on one side of John's body he couldn't see. I, I do think that your senses, because we have 10 different senses, we don't have five or six senses, guys, we have 10 senses. I do think you would have sensed that something was there and therefore then turned your head to see the full scope of what was happening. That's why my thoughts around John Devine's disappearance are probably more of the portal type with this nefarious group. Kind of like what happened to many rivers back in the Bennington Triangle is kind of where my opinion lies with John Devine's disappearance, but I would like to hear your thoughts obviously down in the comment section below. On Friday, September 6th, 1997, John Devine left to go for a hike and an overnight camp in Olympic National Park. John planned to hike up Mount Baldy, which is 6,796 feet high. He was going to use the Maynard Burn Trail, which reportedly is a very, very steep trail, also a very, very rugged trail. Now again, this is September in Washington State, and when I was listening to some other people talk about this case, especially people who are from the area, they pointed out something that I, as a resident of the Southeast, would not have realized. For us here down in the Southeast, August and September are two of the absolute hottest months of the year. We're talking boiling heat. But in the Northwest, according to locals, September is a time where winter is coming. So when I heard that John Devine was doing this hike in September, in my mind's eye, it was a warm day. He was probably in shorts and a t-shirt, but apparently that's just not the case for this area of the world. He would have been dressed for a potential snow and would have been going against some of the natural elements. Now, once again, John Devine was from the area. So even though that shifted my perception of what happened, 
of what the area might have looked like, what the elements were like when he went missing. For him being a native, this probably wasn't that big of a deal. Now the next day on September 7th, when John Devine was supposed to be returning back home from his overnight stay in Olympic National Park, people did pass him on the Gray Wolf Ridge, which is another trail in Olympic National Park. Now from what I understand with the Olympic National Park, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section below, but most of the trails that are established by the park do run along the rivers and the creeks. This is because a lot of the national trails were modeled after trails that wild animals had already kind of pre-created. And again, this does come back to the fact that this area of, of nature in the United States is very dense and very hard to get through. And so all of these trails are trails that are taken by both humans and animals. Now the interesting thing about when John Devine was seen by these witnesses was that he had no gear with him which I found to be rather odd. Now I couldn't find any other people kind of talking about this, the fact that the witnesses just saw him hiking without any gear, but I would imagine that if you're gonna go camping and it's gonna be freaking cold outside, you're probably gonna have at least a sleeping bag on you. I would never survive camping in that cold of, of weather because let's be honest, I don't even own a pair of gloves from where I live. But I just don't think that anybody, regardless of whether you were used to the cold or not, would want to sleep out under the stars without any type of, of a blanket at least, or some type of, of something to keep them warm. Maybe I'm mistaken, but that was just kind of odd to me. I know people might think that maybe he was just hiking around to find like berries or something and he maybe had a campsite already set up and was gonna head back and uh, take down the campsite before coming home, but I just, don't, especially if it's like an overnight thing, I just don't think he would kind of do that. I think he would, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I just think a human being would then pack up and then head back home, especially if, if you were supposed to meet your family. I, I just I just think this is very, very odd that these witnesses saw him without anything on him. Maybe I'm looking too much into this, but but please let me know your thoughts down below. Now again, John was supposed to meet with his family on September 7th, this day where he was spotted hiking without any gear, the day after he left for his overnight camping trip. And when John did not show up to meet back up with his family, his family immediately called the police to report him as a missing person. Now, if you watched our episode last week, you know that I learned that national parks do act kind of as their own sovereign territory within their borders. And so a lot of these searches have to be done and orchestrated by the park ranger. Immediately, the rangers did start to search for John. Again, this is a 73-year-old man who obviously was not known just to disappear. Obviously, his family was very, very concerned. In part of the search, they did send a helicopter up to look over the area. This was a very specific rescue helicopter, and unfortunately, this helicopter crashed, and three people lost their lives, and five were injured in the crash. The helicopter itself was at about a 5,000 foot level off of Mount Baldy. This again was the mountain that John allegedly was going to be hiking on. It was about 20 miles south of the major port there near the Olympic National Park. Now it appears to me that the helicopter crashed because the weather was so bad that day. So once again, this goes back to the idea that John Devine was seen with no equipment. And if the weather was that bad, obviously someone as experienced as a hiker as, as John Devine was and, and was familiar with the area probably would have had a sleeping bag with him. But again, maybe I'm just looking too much into that, but it just seems very strange to me. Because of this helicopter crash, the authorities at the Olympic National Park called off the search on September 13th, a mere six days after John had been reported missing. If you remember from our episode last week, it was about the same amount of time that they called off the search for Jacob Gray as well. Now, Jacob Gray was eventually found a few years later. However, John Devine has absolutely never been found. 
Now, once more, a lot of the locals do believe that this was a case of Bigfoot, but there could be a more practical reason. Because winter was coming, a lot of the wild animals in the area were scavenging for food. So if something had happened to John, let's say like he twisted his ankle or got off the trail for a little bit and then like broke his leg, who knows, and was stranded and couldn't be heard screaming because the forest itself is rather loud and eventually passed away, his body could have been moved by wild animals looking for food. That is a possibility. But again, as I told you guys, my suspicions lie more in the same nefarious things that are happening over in the Bennington Triangle. Is there a portal here that's being used by bad people in our human race as well as possibly bad off-worlders? I don't know. Now, because a lot of these searches have been called off very quickly, there isn't that much information, uh, kind of like the Bennington Triangle. Although this case is uh, quite current compared to the Bennington Triangle, we still just don't have that much to go by because nothing of John Devine's has ever been found since his disappearance. So I would love to hear your perspective and your point of view down in the comment section below. What do you think is happening in the Olympic National Park? If you're from the area and you've seen Bigfoot, I also want to hear your story as well. Of course, with all these missing cases, all my love goes out to the family of the people who have gone missing. And I do hope that eventually there will be closure for all people involved. And wherever John Devine ended up, I hope that he is at peace now. All right, guys, thank you so much for sitting through another Mystery Monday. I hope that you're all having a very wonderful start to a very, very hectic January. Hold your head up high and know that the best is yet to come. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.